want to have a pet. But they say the only pets we can have for fish, and fish suck. <laughs> you can't play or cuddle with a fish. I don't want a dog or anything, just like a hamster. What's the difference, really? They both live in an aquarium, right? <laughs> and then it's signed, Pretty Emotional Toward Mammal Embargoes, which is clever because the acronym is Pet Me. <laughs> which, you know, at the time I never read anything into that. <laughs> I might have missed an opportunity. <laughs> About ten years too late, that's, that's my track record right there. <laughs> my response. Well, Petney, when I lived in the dorms, I too felt the desire for something mammalian to cuddle. <laughs> However, since I horrify most women, I decided to buy an animal that was forced to love me or face starvation. <laughs> A pet, in other words. So I bought two guinea pigs and an aquarium. I called them Mr. Fluffins and Squeaky Pete. They were teddy bear short hairs, cute as buttons. How did I deal with the dorm rule against pets? Simple, I ignored them. <laughs> this worked really well for about two months until my RA saw them. He told me I'd have to get rid of them, and I agreed. Then I got back to ignoring the rule. <laughs> this worked really well for another month until he saw them a second time. And now we have a little bit of script-style dialogue going back and forth. Him. You said you were going to get rid of those. Me. Get rid of what? <laughs> Him. Those. I got rid of the old ones. Those are new ones. <laughs> Him. You can't have any pets but fish. Me. They aren't pets, they're food. <laughs> I'm just fattening them up. Him. Listen, there are rules. Me. In Thoreau's concept of civil disobedience, <laughs> it's every citizen's duty to oppose unjust laws. Him. I'm getting the hall director. <laughs> About ten minutes later, the hall director stopped by. He says, you can't have pets in the dorm. It says right in the handbook. Me. Except fish. Him. Right. Except fish. Me. Those are fish. <laughs> Him. Those are guinea pigs. Me. Prove it. So he leaves and he comes back with a dictionary. Here, fish, an aquatic animal. Me, they're aquatic. Him, prove it. So I leave and I come back with my neighbor's 10 gallon aquarium. It's full of water, plastic plants, and several confused neon tetras named after the various stooges. Now you should know something at this point. Squeaky Pete was everything you could ever want in a guinea pig. He's loving, cuddly, playful. Mr. Fluffins, however, was standoffish. <laughs> he would occasionally give me this snobby look, as if he really didn't approve of my behavior. A few days ago, he and I had had a talk about how he might more willingly embrace the role of loving pet. <laughs> At the end of the talk, I thought we were in agreement, but when I picked him up afterward, he made we on my hand. <laughs> so, with the hall director standing there, I picked up Mr. Fluffins, dusted the cedar chips off him, and dropped him in the aquarium. <laughs> squeaked a little, and then started to swim around. <laughs> then the hall director said, aquatic means they live underwater. <laughs> Swimming around must have helped. <laughs> so, turning to look my hall director in the eye, I took Mr. Fluffins in a firm grip and pushed him underwater. <laughs> Sweet mother of fuck, he shouted. <laughs> what are you doing? 
I'm showing you my fish. <laughs> Calmly, still looking him in the eye. <laughs> Mr. Fluffins and the Stooges started some improv comedy that lasted for five seconds, ten seconds, fifteen seconds. I didn't look away from the hall director. His eyes were huge and he started to sweat. I didn't blink. It's a fish, he said. <laughs> I pulled Mr. Fluffins out of the tank, squeezed him out, then wrapped him in a towel and put him on my roommate's bed in case he decided to puke. <laughs> and after that, pet me, the hall director never gave me any trouble at all. <laughs> Best of all, Mr. Fluffins became the perfect pet. <laughs> For about three weeks. Then he tried to shiv me in my sleep. <laughs> After that, we had another talk, during which he made wee on my hand yet again. So I killed him, ate him, and made his skin into a little hat that I wear to this day.